Hello. Let's try to understand our primary trigonometric ratios. I'd like to start right from the very beginning. Like, what are these ratios and, you know, how did they came into existence? It's like very basic question, okay? Uh, let's try to understand what's going on here. Let me draw first a triangle. There are two rays, like these are my rays, just going like that. From a point, and let's call this point as origin O. Right. Now, think about this. I will draw a line here so that it makes 90 degrees with the base. So this is my right angle triangle, correct? Now, if you make uh, measurements and you measure ratio of these two sides and compare it with another triangle, let's say, let me make another big triangle and where this line is dropped here and this is also 90 degrees correct uh, let's say that our sides here are this side is a from here to here and let's say the big side is a dash similarly let's say this height of this perpendicular is b and let's say this is b dash if you make measurements, that is, ratio of, let's say, B over A, right? And let's say this is C. From here to here, it is C. And then from here to here, let us say it is C dash. Okay. Let's say we measure B over A and B dash over A dash. Now, will they be equal or different? Well, these are similar triangles because they are perpendicular lines, right? Now, they have this angle in common, 90 degrees. So, when two angles are same, third angle has to be same, right? So, three angles or we can also say 2A, A. So, we have similar triangles. In similar triangles, ratios of the sides are constant. They are exactly same. So, even if I make a much bigger triangle here, somewhere here, we will find that the ratio, let's say this is B dash, double dash, and this one is C double dash, correct? So even then we will say that the ratios of the sides are equal, right? Even if you do ratios of other sides, for example, let's say B over C, you'll find that B over C is same as B dash over C dash and which will be same as B double dash over C double dash. Well, same will be true even if you take A over C or any other side ratios, right? So, even for A over C, it will be equals to A dash over C dash. Now, it was observed that always these ratios are same. Now, why not give it a name? So, that is how the name comes into picture and a name for B over A, let's say this angle, let me call this theta for the time being, then B over A is given a name tan theta. We got full name is tangent of theta. Well, tangent of theta is like in lines we had been using B over A to find slope of tangents, right? Kind of give you, I'm not sure if it originated from there, but the name uh, takes it to that place. Now, tangent of theta is the full name. Now, this has become so popular that, you know, calling it tangent of theta takes too much of time, right? We just say tan theta or just tan of an angle. So, we say, let this be tan theta. So, tan theta happens to be B over A. Now, it's difficult to remember like how and which side over which side, which two sides. So, then uh, we will say like this is my theta angle and B is opposite to theta. So, let me write tan theta as opposite over A is adjacent. So, we came with tan theta equals to opposite over adjacent. Okay, good. Similarly, 
another name is given to B over C. Now B over C is opposite over hypotenuse. And the name given to this is sine of theta. Let me write here sine of theta. In short, we just drop this E and we write this as sine theta. Note, these are lower case letters. I find students writing sin, sin theta, cos theta, tan theta with capital letters. They are lower case, okay. And now, what is B? B is opposite and what is C? C is hypotenuse, right? So we'll say sin theta is opposite over hypotenuse. So that is sin theta. And we spell it like S-I-N theta. Now, A over C, the name given to us is cosine of theta, okay. Now, cosine of theta, in short, it's written as cos theta, and it is adjacent over hypotenuse. Okay, let me shift it a bit on this side. Okay, so we get these familiar names, tan theta, sine theta, and cosine theta. Now, to use these, it's very mixing up, right? Which, which side over which side? So, we came up with a short form to remember all this. And the short form for you is here. We call it Sokatoa. Sokatoa, <laughs> I don't know how that originated either, but it serves a purpose. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse, which is sine opposite over hypotenuse, correct? And for cos, we write C is adjacent over hypotenuse. And for tan, we are writing T as opposite over adjacent, right? So, so, ka, to, a. So, ka, to, a is, is a short form to remember sine, cosine, and tangent, right? We write here, I'm writing here S, S capital, C, and T capital, just to for the abbreviation, okay? But strictly speaking, when you write in any equation or anywhere, sine, cosine, or tangent, they should be with lower case, okay? This is very, very important to remember, okay? Now, uh, even in coordinate system, now this, we gave an example of a triangle. So in coordinate system, if we have a point, right, any particular point here, then the coordinates of the point are x comma y, correct? Now you will see that, let me just make a triangle, connecting it. That's my right angle triangle, okay? Okay, so in a right angle triangle like this, this side is x, right? x coordinate gives you x, and that gives you y coordinate. And we have a right angle triangle, and let's say this is angle theta, right? Then this hypotenuse can always be found where hypotenuse is equals to square root of x square plus y square equal square root of x square plus y square, right? So here, we can always write, what is sine? So sine theta is equal to y over h, the y coordinate, you see, y over h. And what is cosine? I'm writing in short, cos theta is adjacent, which is x, over h. And what is tan theta? Tan th theta is opposite over adjacent, so y over x, correct? So if I give you a coordinate point, let's say 3 comma 4, you can plug in the values of 3 and 4 and get the value of sine theta. Do you understand? So you get a value, correct? So it has a value. It's a ratio. Ratio is... So like that you can get. Okay. So if i giving you example here, let me just now draw a triangle. And this time, okay, let me give values x and y. Instead of x and y, let me write this as 3 and 4, okay? Let's say the coordinate here is point P. This is my origin. So, P. 
So what is h for us? So let me calc do the calculations here. So h is equals to 3 square which is 9 plus 4 square which is 16 square root, right? That becomes 25 and square root of 25 is 5. So we get this side h is equals to 5 for us, right? And x is equal to 3 for us and y is equals to 4 for us, okay? In that case, what is sine theta? Sine theta is equal to opposite side is 4, the y value, 4 over 5, correct? And cosine theta for this value will be 3 over 5. And tan theta will be y over x, 4 over 3, right? 4 over 3. You will note in these ratios, sine and cosine should always be less than or equal to 1. They cannot be greater than 1. Why so? Can you tell me the reason? We say, what I'm trying to say is that sine theta is in first quadrant, we're just talking about this quadrant, right? Is always greater than or equal to 1 and less than or equal to uh, greater than or equal to 0 and less than or equal to 1. Similarly, cos theta is also less than or equal to 1 and greater than or equal to 0, right? Why is it so? Why is it so? Well, the simple thing is that sine and cosine is a side over hypotenuse. And in any right angle triangle, hypotenuse is always the longest side, correct? <laughs> Until and unless you have theta is 0. When theta is 0, hypotenuse is same as adjacent. That's a very special case. If theta is 0, hypotenuse is same as adjacent. So this ratio becomes 1. So cos of 0 is 1. And sine of 0 will be 0 because the opposite side becomes 0, correct? That's a very special case. And if theta is 90 degrees, so this side will be 90 degrees. As it moves this side, adjacent side becomes 0 and 0. Adjacent becomes 0, but y becomes equals to hypotenuse. So opposite and hypotenuse become equal for theta equals to 90 degrees. Is that okay? So sine theta is 1. But cosine theta becomes zero because as I move this hypotenuse here, opposite side is full and adjacent is zero, right? As far as tan theta is concerned, it can have any value because it's the ratio of the other two sides. Any, any could be bigger, right? So it's the ratio of any two sides. So tan theta values are belongs to all real numbers, okay? Well, if we have 90 degrees, then adjacent is 0. That means x is 0. So you can't divide by 0, right? So for tan theta, there is a restriction that it is never, you know, uh, for 90 degrees, it is not valid. Okay. Now from here, we can also find a relationship between tan and sine and cos. Uh, let me show you. Or can you find one? Okay. Let that be an exercise for you. What is the relationship between tan theta, cos theta, and sine theta, you may use this coordinate x, y in general and figure it out, okay, and the ratios which we just defined. I hope you appreciate the method which we have followed here uh, showing that for any, any triangle, if we keep on dividing it, you could have make it smaller also, right? If you draw up in perpendiculars like that, we land up with similar triangles where the ratio of the sides, whichever sides you may take, is always constant, got it? Well, we could have done A over B also. Those are reciprocal of our functions which we'll talk later. So at present, I'm only touching on our basic primary trigonometric ratios, which are sine, cosine, and tangent. They're reciprocal, that means sine, instead of saying a positive over hypotenuse, we could say hypotenuse over a positive, right? So, those will be the reciprocal of our standard primary trigonometric functions, right? So we'll see those soon in another video, okay? I hope you understand the concept and you appreciate uh, the basic trigonometric functions, sine, cosine, and tangent, okay? Always remember, when you, whenever you write sine, cosine, and tangent, lower case should be used to write them, okay? And the values of sine and cosine are limited from 0 to 1 in the coordinate 1. Well, you'll soon learn this is only for the acute angle when theta is less than 
as we move this angle to the other side, you know, x becomes negative. So we do get negative values. Do you understand? Or if we go down to this, when our arm moves downwards, then the opposite side could be negative 2. So therefore, this is, I should write down here very clearly, is for the acute angle. Acute angle is where theta is between 0 and 90 degrees, okay? In general, in general, which you'll learn soon, uh, the value of sine theta and cosine theta varies from minus 1 to plus 1, okay? Minus 1 because then we could have triangles in these quadrants, right? Here you can see the values of x will be negative in this quadrant and in these quadrants value of y will be negative. So once it's negative, instead of plus 1, we'll get negative 1, correct? So that's how it is. And we'll explore more about sine, cosine and tan in other videos. This is just to give you an idea how ratios have been given a name and today we use them in so many applications, right? sine, cosine and tan have become just, you know, like x and y variables in algebra. Okay, I hope you appreciate it. Thank you.